Hello everyone, welcome back to Ray's Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2, where I plan to refine the Sakura Kerbin Circumnavigation plane with the full glory of its two Goliath engines in an attempt to make sure that it can actually circumnavigate Kerbin. And one suggestion that intrigued me was just closing off the back node on this tank. Uh, this was suggested by Brian Cox, and it I, I wonder about it. It shouldn't have any effect, right? It's a backward-facing node. Um, in theory, it should be occluded, and but but in the old days, the, this sort of thing would cause extra drag. So I'm sufficiently interested in that that I'm gonna try it out just with putting a nose cone on that node, which we hadn't had before. And yeah, let me just take it outside, and we'll talk more as we take off and go around. All right, so here's Bob. I could dump the mop propellant, but if it really comes down to that, we're probably not making it. Uh, speaking of which, we can always tell whether we've made a circumnavigation. With the dialog box, it'll show us our distance traveled, and we can compare that to the circumference of Kerbin. So, that's a thought. As far as the landing gear being an issue, uh, when I extended the landing gear, it was slower than our takeoff speed, so I think... I think it's not the landing gear extension causing a problem, but who knows. I haven't put extra struts this time. You know what, uh, let me make one other addition. Let me actually put the struts on. I don't know if they're gonna help or not, but we might as well. We'll put the struts on between the body and the engines. Okay, two struts per engine. I'll try pulling up now. Oh, okay, I can get up uh, at about 130 meters per second, potentially. Now, some people uh, suggested that going subsonic would help, and in real life it would. Uh, but, I had actually tried it out in the previous flight. Uh, after, uh, after a while, we had gotten to the point where I decided I wouldn't be able to make it, so I slowed down. And I cut out a bit of that. Uh, out of the vehicle, uh, out of the video because it was taking too long. But I actually flew it subsonic for a while, long enough to tell what the fuel consumption was, and it didn't seem to be benefiting us. So, going subsonic, in theory, would be beneficial, but in practice, it, it, it wasn't working out, as far as I could tell. So, going as high as possible is as possible is uh, obviously a good idea. I'll try and go a little bit higher this time and accept the slightly lower speed. Perhaps I should do the more rigorous testing, which is basically launching something straight up and covering nodes or not covering nodes. I'm sure other people have done that though. I'm gonna try for 500 meters per second. And so we'll go as high as we can while maintaining that. There's also an open question as far as what effect the time warp has, but I thought it was doing a pretty good job. Also, there is a competing interest in that I don't want this to take forever. <laughs> so, uh, already a half hour flight is, I mean, after we start up the time warp, is quite enough. It certainly seems to like it past 500, to be honest. At the moment, I don't feel like we're getting better performance. Now that we're in cruise and everything's stabilized. It might be marginal, but probably not enough to make a difference. So, I'm actually going to try to go up higher and go with uh, subsonic speed. But as we go slower, you see, it's harder to keep a higher altitude with this. Oh, 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 shoot. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, caps lock was on. Oh, fudge. Well, hmm. Maybe I should have taken a time warp there. Um, well, well, we'll try a clean launch, and we'll try subsonic, and see if we can get to an altitude like that. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep it subsonic as we ascend here. And you see, it's slowing down and we're leveling off here. We're not actually getting much higher. 
I actually feel that it had less drag. We're at full thrust, so we're not saving any fuel here, right? We are only saving fuel if we go lower in thrust. I feel it actually had less drag at a higher speed, but we might be transonic. So I'll try and throttle down. I mean, we're going down. <laughs> we're going down and we have max pitch here. So at a higher altitude, it seems to only be able to maintain itself when going fast. So that probably means we need more wing. So with as little wing as it has, we can't go really high and slow. Or not slower than the speed of sound. It just doesn't have enough wing for that, apparently. But maybe we can stay low and go slow. But, you know, then we're in the thicker part of the atmosphere, so we're fighting against that. You know what, maybe I'll start from scratch with it, so that we don't mess it up. Let's start from scratch. And just go a low and subsonic sort of thing. It seems counterintuitive, but we just can't stay high and stay subsonic. I mean, this is a deeply counterintuitive plane to begin with. So here we are, staying subsonic at low altitude. Yeah, well, we'll see how high we can get. Assuming I keep 50% throttle, let's say, and 300 meters per well, whatever we've got right now, and 300 meters per second. Seems like about 2 kilometers, if we want 300 meters per second. 300 is a bit iffy, it's sort of transonic. It depends on how bad transonic is around here. We'll judge by how much ground we cover, short of actually going around and see if we're actually making enough by the time we get to like half full, otherwise this is too slow for me. This is too slow. It is fairly nice and stable at 4x time warp in the atmosphere while flying, which is nice. That could have gone horribly wrong too. Clouds. We have clouds. Uh, the clouds are sort of moving discreetly. <laughs> They're sort of jumping to the right there, or to the south, if you will. Uh, well, I guess 4x might do that. We're getting close to a quarter of the way through our fuel. We are not really a quarter of the way through the flight, but I'm willing to get to the point where we're halfway through the fuel to see. Well, I think we're skimming right above the mountain tops here. It's not going well. However, I will try to slow down to 270, which should be below transonic speeds and transonic drag. And we'll see how that works for the second half. And that should give us a pretty good read on the subsonic potential of this. I'm thinking that we just need to push it as fast as possible. And just because it lacks wing area and it really can't get to the higher altitudes without going fast. Okay, we are at half hour fuel and we might be 90 degrees away from the KSC but certainly not halfway. Okay, I'll try and slow down. Yeah, I think it's just gonna stay at 270. And we'll see for a little bit, maybe a quarter of a quarter of the tank if you will. Okay, we're in daylight. We have uh, covered the extra quarter tank. So we've covered a lot of ground in a way, but I've accidentally gone too far north, it says, but it doesn't look north. It looks south, so I'm confused. But we'll set that aside for now. We're obviously south of the equator, and the KSC has moved on quite a lot. So even though I think we got better performance at this speed, I don't know if we would get to the KSC again. I'm thinking whether I want to do an easterly flight just at this speed to see how it goes, or whether I want to do a polar one. And we'd have to start off with the KSC like over here, and then sort of have a weird curved path up to the pole, 
and try a sun synchronous thing, uh, well, sort of along the Terminator, and try and hit the KSC over here. But let me give it a go. I mean, this is how much lead time we had last time, and probably the KSC would cover half the planet by the time we get back to it. Which is, uh, that's too complicated to try a polar path. That would mean that we'd have to take off from it here, go up to the pole, double back, go south, and then curve back around like that. It's just weird. I think we have to try and go faster. So it's possible 270 might work out for us, but I think I'm going to try out uh, increasing the wing size and see how that helps. And when I say wing size, these are just sta uh, stabilizers. They're not, not real, real wings. So we're reducing span and increasing length. That's moving the center of lift quite a bit back. I'm increasing the length of the bottom one as well, since that's where we get our pitch authority from, mostly. So we're trying to resist adding more fuel to this. We'll see how this performs. And we'll go high speed with it. Okay. Alright, let's see how this works out. Can we get to higher altitudes? with the extra little bit of lift. Well, the fact that it doesn't have as much span reduced to drag. Well, okay. It seems to be tending to the left for some reason. But using any control surface to hold something like that it's not ideal, it's a deflection that causes extra drag. Certainly sort of stabilizing to a leftward tendency quite often. Just nothing that ought to be asymmetrical. Okay, I think I'm gonna restart it. Just try and fix this leftward tendency, which I don't need. Okay, let's try again and see if reloading worked or whether the craft file just has a problem like that. Uh, turning to the left, I mean. So, here we go. Uh, sure seems to. I guess something I did to it with the wings, maybe? Let me just double check the older one here and see whether it's okay or not. Nah, this one seems stable. Something about what we did to the other one caused it to have a leftward tendency. This one has a little bit of roll there, but it's easy to correct and everything. Okay, well, let me uh, use this one and try to remake the longer wing version. Okay, so let's see if this one has the roll problem or not. Uh, it's not really the wing shape that I wanted, but... We'll go with it and hope that it has some effect, and not a bad effect. Well, 130 on the takeoff speed still. Yeah, it's not rolling to the left. Something about that craft file is just messed up. It might have been something like the repositioning of the struts. This time I didn't try to reposition the struts, I just kept them. That's why they're stretched like that, because I moved the engine nacelles up. But on the previous one, I tried to move the struts, and that might have created the roll tendency. I don't know. It's weird, but... I don't have any better theories. Everything else... I mean, everything should have been done in symmetry, so... I mean, not a big surprise that more wing will help you out. Unless it falls off, of course. But shape the ring wing wrong and then you get more drag. 
And at supersonic speeds, that's obviously very important. This isn't exactly the best shaped wing, but for now we will go with it. But it's possible that placing the wing in a more discreet position, but then again they'll be blasted by the engine thrust, and I sort of wanted to clear that, even though we're slightly clipping it right now. I, I did that accidentally. I did not mean to do that, but uh, yeah. I, I didn't really want to put a wing in the path of the engine thrust, so... Now, it's a little bit faster than the 500 that I wanted. Uh-oh, I accidentally trimmed and roll. No, don't do that. If I accidentally hold down ALT while pressing Q and E to roll a bit, it can cause problems. Seems about 8 kilometers right now is what we're sticking to. I'm going to start time warping. Yeah, uh, so the roll tendency right now is because I accidentally did roll trim when I didn't mean to. But the one on the previous craft file, that was not because of me trimming, because I hadn't trimmed yet. I wish it would indicate how much thrust it was actually producing here for us to get a sense, but the it's getting less intake air than at lower levels, which in theory means it's burning less fuel and also producing less thrust at the same ISP because, you know, ISP times mass flow rate is your thrust. But well, uh, your exhaust velocity times your mass flow rate is your thrust. But anyway, um, yeah, so in theory we're using less fuel at higher altitudes. But it'd be nice to verify that with it actually telling us how much thrust we're producing. But I think that's the case, given that our total amount of air intake air being processed is lower. And I'm assuming that the fuel-air mixture has remained the same. Okay, we're below one quarter of the fuel done. And not quite 90% away from the KSC yet. I mean, 90 degrees away from the KSC. But we did take extra fuel to start up. It certainly seems better than previous flights. Uh, lights might be advisable, but then lights might cause extra drag too, so... Okay, we're at half of our fuel. And... Well, almost half of the way around. Not quite, but almost. Well, we have one third of our fuel left, and we occasionally drift up to 10 kilometers. It's a little bit wobbly right now. Uh, more or less steady. I mean, it's going up and down a bit. And we are approaching the Terminator. The Space Center has moved on a bit, but maybe it's about a third of the way around Kerbin from us, so maybe it's not too bad. We continue to see. There is Don. So slight increase in wingage clearly has made an effect. We could add more wings. Um, the exact placement of them is the question. I wonder if a biplane works better. I think the next thing I'll try is actually a biplane and have two of these. One at the bottom and one at the top. In theory that gives us double the surface area. And it doesn't stick out too much. And also won't be in the way of the thrust of the engines. Okay, we have a little bit less than a quarter of our fuel left. It's still tantalizing, but probably not doable. We'll see. Uh, maybe a little bit more wing area. Or stabilizer area. But we'll see how far we get. 
I may deliberately crash it at the end to get the dialogue because I actually don't know how to bring that up. <laughs> like the distance traveled. F3 doesn't do that anymore, so I don't know what the button is to bring up like our distance travel. It used to be F3, you could call up anytime you wanted. But maybe it's a different function key? Well, yeah, certainly closer than ever, but we're down to 1.5 tons of fuel. We'll see how far that gets us, but it's getting a bit tight here. Maybe I should have dumped the mob propellant. I'm just gonna see how far it gets, and if we crash, we'll get the dialogue, and we will get a read on what the distance was. We are approximately looking for 3,768, or let's just call it 3,770 kilometers. Under a ton left. Can we at least get it to the home continent? It's tough. We ended a little bit south because of the bad trim. Actually, you know, maybe we'd have made it a little bit better if I had not accidentally trimmed it a little bit and caused myself to constantly have to correct it. But we probably shouldn't have such tight margins anyway. Uh, yeah, it's getting interesting. 0.5 tons left. It's getting into, you should have dumped the mop propellant margins. It's amazing how much mileage we're getting from this last little bit. Okay, well, I'm coming out of time warp. We can see the space center area there. But we have 0.15 tons of fuel. I'm waiting until our little impact point... I mean, if our impact point is there, surely that's good, right? I think I should descend. Oh gosh, maybe I should descend a lot. Wow, this thing has a lot of momentum. Okay, I'm taking it off of fine controls. Okay, it was carrying a lot more than I thought. But now that we're getting into the thicker atmosphere, it's losing speed a lot. Okay, maybe maybe that was a little bit too optimistic. Uh-oh. I can't pull up. <laughs> oh no! Okay, okay. Um. I need to run the engines just to pull up, but I think I'm gonna smack into those mountains right next to the space center. What kind of landing speed do we have with this thing? When well, I can't even pull up very well without being at 300 meters per second. Maybe I should check the balance of it when we have less fuel. I don't... I don't know. I don't think I can land. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, you could put the gear down. I mean, this is lower speeds than we took off. Uh, I can't pull up. Uh... Oh! Oh! Okay, cut, cut, cut. Uh... Okay, well, landing needs some work. But we got back, folks. We got back. <laughs> SG Force Experience 17. We wanted 3,770 and we got 3,873. So going this way around is fine. 
Um, it doesn't do any... I, 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 the extra 100, I think, was probably just me wiggling around left to right. Um, well, that was surprising. <laughs> I did not expect to actually sort of make it, but we'll need to refine this a little bit. I don't know what will happen with two wings. We should try that. I should probably dump the bomb propellant. That might have helped. But landing overall seems... Our, our pitch control is really bad. Uh, so we may have to resort to canards. I'm not sure. Yeah, we maybe instead of... We will, we'll have a two-wing version, and then we'll have a canard version, maybe. Anyway, more experimentation with the Sakura will have to be done. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.